Welcome to Shortcut Reviews, where we get right to the point. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Monterey Bay Knives Min Pin. This was provided by the vendor uh, to our pass around group, so take that into consideration. Could be the best quality controlled knife ever. Next to our Sage 5 and our Delica. You can see it's not a huge knife, but it's not, it's not tiny. It has almost the exact same cutting edge as the Sage 5. Uh, pretty good office size, I, I think. So let's take a look at it. It's got an interesting blade. It's got a um, swedge on top, but the way they ground the swedge is it really makes it look like a clip point. They've also added a little extra belly here. Uh, so you get on a small blade, you get a nice flat, and you actually get a really nice belly, a very robust tip, and uh, very robust for a knife this size. They start off with stock that is absolutely pretty thick for this size knife, and they carry it out to the end. So what you get is a knife that is not the world's greatest slicer, but it feels super robust for its size. So that's the trade-off, and that, and that's that, that's a fair trade-off. It has no um, branding here, so it's got this really nice bead blasted finish on the flat uh, on the on the grind, and um, the flat is kind of a satiny with a little bit of striation in there. Um, also, clip-on system, clamp-on sharpening system will probably work just fine. There's the logo for Monterey Bay knives. There is no origin or steel. It is China. It is uh, S35BN, and it is a, a Ray Laconico design. I'm on the second round of the Mass Drop uh, Keen, so I'm pretty excited uh, to have a, to actually own a, a Ray Laconico design. I like a lot of his designs. They, they, they speak to me, so uh, pretty excited about that. But that will be another review for another day. So let's take a look at it. Uh, cage bearings. Um, Nice sharpening choil. Again, they add a little bit of belly here to give you a nice belly with uh, some flat, robust point. So you can't really complain about the blade shape at all. Nice plunge grind and um, a bit of a ricasso here. Uh, I would not call that a finger choil. Um, again, I don't call anything a finger choil that's not a purposely built choil that has some jimping and some protection. So you're really on the blade here. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't choke up, but my medium size fat fingers, Three fingers fit within that one big handle choil, and then my pinky rides up on the back end. Really not a problem. It's actually very comfortable for a small knife. Again, nothing sharp here on the flipper tab, so there is no jimping on the flipper tab at all, and which is fine. And you're not gonna you're not gonna push button this guy because he comes to like an axe shaped head here. Um, he's only gonna light switch, but the detent is really dialed in, and flipping it on those cage ceramic bearings. No problem. Uh, action is absolutely great. The speed holes do add some traction. Uh, I actually got the keen purple with the strip, you know, milled into the side, and I'm glad I did. I think the finish is pretty slippery, but I think those holes really do give your fingertips a little something to grab onto, and so I kind of do like the speed holes. You either love them or hate them aesthetically, but I think functionally they, they work pretty well. Plenty of access to the lock bar. The lock bar locks up early. My one real big complaint, um, I think Nick would call it an ugly, is really this stick on the lock bar. It is, it's absolutely, it's, now it's absolutely terrible. Now this is a pass around knife, so this has not been, no one's touched it up with Sharpie, which sometimes helps lock stick. It might just wear in, I don't know. But as of now, it's uh, it's pretty terrible, and because of the lock stick and there's no over travel stop, um, you tend to you tend to actually overspring the lock bar because it sticks and then it then it kind of goes. So that's not awesome. Now the clip does ride on the lock bar just a little bit, so that might help a little bit with over travel, but probably not a lot because it's actually sprung pretty nicely. There's a there's a bit of spring in it um, as a middle titanium clip, so that is nice. It is tip up right hand carry only, and. Let's just throw it in the pocket while we're talking about the clip and we're gonna come back to just one or two more things. Um, it, uh, it rides pretty high in the pocket. It's, it, there, there's a lot of knives showing, so that may or may not uh, make you happy. It, it has a lanyard hole in it, which seems a little misplaced on a knife of this size. I would have preferred no lanyard hole and, and to even get the pocket clip up just a little bit higher. But the lanyard hole is encased in the back spacer and the back spacer is carbon fiber. It is not G10, so it's a very premium material for a little backspacer like that. Open construction everywhere else. Um, you're a little close to the blade. I can certainly, I can certainly touch the blade up here, so not, uh, not awesome. And particularly because it's got that sharpening notch in there, um, that really tends to want to grab you if you run your finger that way. 
so you can totally feel it. And um, last but not least, uh, two screws, of course, in the back, uh, through the back spacer, but they go right into the titanium. So if you ever stripped it out, you are, um, you're kind of screwed uh, with those screws. So I would prefer to see Chicago screws. I complain about this on the aluminum handled dividend, for example, on Kershaw. At that price point, it's a little bit more forgiving than this. And that's it. Stay sharp. And thanks again for joining me for this review.